Hello and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to do an exercise together to help you get an answer to something important to you. The first step about this is how you ask the questions. You might wanna go get a pad of paper. Um, Charles is making noise in here, so we might have a little bit of a distraction. Asking the question in a particular way actually really matters. Intuitives know this because we know that everything's about not allowing the brain to offer advice. You have a beautiful brain. I know you've heard me say this many, many times. It's stunning and gorgeous. But your intuition, even though your third eye rests inside uh, your, <laughs> excuse me, even though your third eye rests inside of your brain, it doesn't originate from that spot. Insight doesn't come from the mind. It doesn't originate from the third eye. The third eye is like a television screen. It projects intuition that comes from the second layer of your auric field. And the best way to access the second layer of the auric field is through distraction of the human mind. How you ask a question matters. So go get your piece of paper or a pen, or if you have a great memory, you can just remember what I'm talking about. Let's say you have a question. You want to know um, what kind of work would be in your best interest. It's a common question I receive all the time in my intuitive work from clients and students. So you don't want to write, what would be the best intuitive work for me? The brain will be triggered, and that's what we're trying to avoid when you use words like how, what, where, when, or why. You use those words and your brain's gonna be triggered and then it's gonna to start to analyze and process kind of through time elimination. Uh, time is something that actually is not real. It doesn't truly exist. And your intuition knows that and your intuition is not going to be detoured through time language. So avoid those words. What I want you to write down, and this would be true for any question that you ask, is a phrase that works very good when you're wanting deep, insightful, more accurate information than what your mind can uh, deliver to you. So please express to me whatever's in my highest good regarding fulfilling work, an incredible career. You know, Fill in the blank of what words you want to use and don't use words you normally use. For years and years, I always use the word work because I actually really like to work. It's kind of in my DNA. And I switched so I wouldn't be triggered um, in some way that my mind would trigger me to the word career. So use language you don't normally use, but don't make it too uh, crazy or too um, unrelated. The universe actually knows whatever your question is. We're just using language because we don't want the mind to be triggered. We don't want your mind to help you with this other than by being quiet. That's the best help it could ever give you. It's like if you have a house full of people and you need to clean the house and nobody wants to help you and you're not letting them help you, the best thing that could happen for you is if they would leave the house for a few hours so you could get all your work done. So that's what we're doing with the brain. That's the best thing it could do for us is to be quiet during moments where we're moving inside the body and accessing the wisdom that's already inside of us. So the answer to your question is already in your body. I promise you, the answer to any question that you have whatsoever is already present inside of you. You're a magnificent creature. You're an irre irreplaceable part of the divine. Of course, you have every solution that you could possibly want in your life already available to you. So we're just going to do this exercise so you can get to it and allow yourself to understand it so that you can make different steps forward that would be less reflective of what your mind would say. On top of that, so now you've got some idea about the question. On top of that, once you get into the information that I'm gonna help you to move towards, please do not allow your mind to analyze or process this information. Don't think about it, just be an observer, just collect the data. Don't try to figure it out. So many people stop their intuitive process because then they get back into their brain and they go, well, what does that mean? Are you sure that, well, what if it means this? Because your mind will give you an answer, but it's not the answer that you want. Your mind really cannot decipher insight. All of that is available inside of your body, but it's not something that your brain is great at. So there's nothing wrong with the mind. Just saying that again, I say it all the time, every single day, multiple times a day, your brain is perfect, but using it to do something that it wasn't created to do isn't helpful. It's like using your phone as a spoon. You could do it. You could get some food in your mouth, you know, depending on what type of food it is, certainly not soup, but it's not very efficient. 
Same thing is true with your brain. It's a beautiful tool. You could probably make it work really hard to get some intuitive, accurate information, but it wasn't created to do that. So don't use it that way, please. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do several things to distract yourself from your beautiful mind. You've got your question down, right? And you found a different word perhaps than work. Either you used career or you said, you know, please express to me whatever is in my highest good that I do every day that's fulfilling and rewarding, right? And you don't have to use monetary language. The universe knows that you, of course, want to create some wealth from the work that you do, or you probably wouldn't do it. So next, we're going to do just a slight little Qigong move to start to get the energy moving in your body. And I want you to allow yourself to let go of your mind and start to feel the particles moving in your body. This is extremely important, even if you were not seeking intuitive information moving energy in your body consciously and feeling it moving your body is extremely important. So putting your hands in um, kind of like fists, right? But not moving your nails um, be beneath, but le leaving your nails exposed. I think this is called an open fist. And then take one of your knuckles and just rub it on your nail beds. beds. This is a Qigong movement. I do this a lot. Um, before I teach a class or if I want my energy elevated. And you're just going to do this for a little while. You, you could start to feel the energy moving right away. When energy moves, you might feel warmth or tingling. You might all of a sudden have an awareness of a certain part of your body. Like I felt warmth right away, running up my arms and my shoulders. Please don't try to analyze this or stop it. Let it continue. I'm just going to switch to the other hand now so that I'm um, utilizing both nail beds. And because you're letting the energy surge and you're not questioning it or stopping it, uh, once you do that, you're gonna to start to feel in other places of your body and probably areas where the energy wants to move. Like I felt it in my glutes after the warmth happened and my shoulders felt kind of tingly. I felt energy moving in my glutes and I'm a big walker, not a great big stretcher. Uh, I'm sure my glutes needed to release some energy. Okay, so let's just switch back over to the other nail bed. We're just warming up the energy. You might start to feel energy moving up your spine, which is very healthy. Just letting this happen. You don't have to understand it. Don't try to understand it. Just let it happen. Energy is a free flowing mechanism if we allow it to be. And it moves in the most profound direction if we let it move. Okay, great. We're gonna stop in just a few more moves. You might feel all of a sudden your body relaxing, your lungs taking deep, deeper breaths because you're not talking like I am. That's the movement of energy and it's normal and healthy to have it moving in a positive direction all the time. Okay, now we're gonna stop and you're gonna feel beautiful tingling in your hands too. That's gorgeous. The movement of energy is normal and healthy and that was wonderful that you let it move in your body. Congratulations. And now you're gonna close your eyes and take some beautiful deep breaths. And when you breathe out, I want you to make a sound. I'm gonna offer a sound, but what we're doing is distracting your mind even further and helping with the movement of energy, which for most people, it means doing something you don't normally do. Like if you don't normally ride a bike and you get in a bike and start moving, you're gonna start moving your energy because you're accessing muscles and other areas of your body that you haven't been routinely controlling with your brain. Moving energy is about being free. So close your eyes and take a lovely deep breath. And when you exhale, just kind of go. Do it again. And if you don't like the sound I'm making, make a different one. The only thing I want you to notice are subtle changes in your body which will help you to recognize that you are moving energy. Like I just involuntarily uncross my legs. I like to cross my legs. It's not a healthy physical position. I like it much better when I don't, uh, but it's just a habit of mine. And so when I made a couple of those sounds, my body relaxed more because we're moving energy. We're moving it a little bit faster. Energy is always moving it, but we're helping it to move more freely in your body. One more sound. Very good. You might start to feel tingling sensations or warmth in other parts of your body because you're actually letting go of your mind and becoming more conscious 
of the flow of energy. That's beautiful. And now what I'd love for you to do with your eyes still closed is to go ahead and rub your hands together. And then we're going to allow your hands to move wherever the answer might be or wherever the answer could move through or your hands are going to land on a place that's going to help the answer to move. So while you're rubbing your hands, I want you to think of your question. Please express to me whatever is in my highest good about fulfilling daily activities that are highly rewarding, or you can use different words that don't trigger your mind. And that means they make you feel calm versus, oh yeah, where's that job? We don't want you to move into any form of anxiety or stress that blocks intuition. Please express to me whatever's in my highest good about my career. And then I want you to stop rubbing your hands and just let your body tell you where to place your hands. This is not a thought process. I just immediately felt my knees or I saw a picture of my knees in my head. The communication between your awareness and your body is called consciousness when you allow it to occur. And it's very fast and spontaneous, uh, but it won't be fear dominated. Like, oh, I should put my hands in my back. It's been hurting me later, lately. No, the answers are not going to probably be in contracted energy. It's going to be in some place it's more free flowing. Or it could be that you need to nurture the contracted energy to release the answer. And you can do this many, many times. Do your best not to let your mind try to figure it out. So just gently allow your hands to fly somewhere on your body that looks like fun. With the eyes still closed, let's do some more breaths with some more of those unique sounds just to help you to get out of your mind. Now you're more engaged with your body where solutions live in your tissues and your cells and your organs because you have cells everywhere in your physical form. And now I want you to just be quiet and allow the information to come through. If you can distract yourself, which means perhaps you'll need to wiggle your toes off and on while you're discerning information coming through, collect the information. Don't try to understand it in this moment. You will stop the flow of consciousness. So time's up. <laughs> Good job. Now what I want you to do is you can open your eyes and now you can write down all the impressions that you received, whatever you saw, whatever you heard, whatever you felt. I want you to write it all down. If you received a lot of information, you might be writing a lot. If you don't think you received a lot of information, you're not going to write as much. But what I would suggest is that you write every little thing down because many times when it comes to the transit 
translation, it's the tiny little things that we ignore that are actually incredibly important. So you're going to write it all down. And then as you're translating, whether you saw, heard, or feel information, and perhaps you got the answer right away and you don't need to write anything down. That's great. But if you're not sure and you haven't really learned how to ask questions within yourself and get solutions, you're going to write the whole thing down. And when you're looking at everything that you wrote down, or you're remembering everything that you experienced, you just have to simply ask, what does that mean to me? So let's say you saw the color green, a lot of green, right? And I want you to ask yourself, what does green mean to me? What do I feel about the color green? Because the universe is talking to you, not the entire world, not just some answer that's not related. The universe is speaking to you. And so you might really love the color green. You might think it's one of the prettiest colors you ever saw in your life. And then maybe you heard a phrase at the same time, like it would be great if you studied this modality or if you took these kind of courses or you actually started to do the work that you already studied for and you have all the techniques that you need, the color green would just be emphasizing that even more. But if you hate the color green and then you're also seeing yourself doing your current job, that's showing you that your current job is not what's in your highest good and you need to go find new fulfilling work. Some people need, first of all, to just get the deep understanding from inside of themselves that they, it's not in their best interest to continue doing the work that they're doing. Now, you may have thought, God, Marie, that was a lot of crazy things I had to do to get some answers from inside of me. Yes, I'm not in disagreement with that. But I want you to know that it's highly possible that you won't have to do this after a while. You're gonna learn how to get out of your head. You're not gonna to have to make noises or rub your hands, although I highly recommend doing that. That feels so good. You won't have to work so hard to distract yourself to get to the information that's inside of you. But if you don't know how to let go of your mind, if you feel uncomfortable being in your body, if you don't know how to enjoy your human experience and enjoy your beautiful body, then yes, you will have to do this for a while, maybe even up to a year so that you can learn to recognize the movement of energy in your body, to trust it, to have fun with it, to play. This is all about having fun. Everything's about having fun. The best answers in the world are going to be based in joy and fun, which your mind will never understand or care about. So you might have to do these little tricks for a little while so that you can feel energy, go to the perfect place in your body where the solution is, allow it to unfold and translate it accurately. I wish you the greatest joy in your self-discovery. Have a great day, bye-bye.